Oh, hello. My name is Dr. Ugama, and I'm here to talk to you today about some financial decision-making tools that you can use in your business, in particular, real options analysis. My volunteer and I will bring you step-by-step step through the whole process of making these decisions. Are you ready? Do I know you? Let's begin, my friend. Let's start by talking about why managers should use some of these decision-making tools available to them. As technology managers, you should use decision-making tools for choices about your business. For example, NPV. Do you know what NPV is, Harshal? Net present value? That's exactly right! Yeah. Net present value calculates the value of a project against the possibility of investing that money somewhere else at an established interest or discount rate. If a project has a positive net present value, it is financially beneficial to undertake that project. If a project has a negative net present value, it is not financially beneficial. The downfall of net present value is that it fails to take into account the probability that a project will or won't succeed. Net present value only accounts for the most likely scenario, which is overly simplistic. Because of its simplicity, managers risk foregoing possible profitable opportunities and risk the success of their business. But isn't real option analysis the best tool in most situations? You're the best volunteer I've ever had, Harshal. There's not a day goes by where I don't use real options analysis in my line of work. Real options analysis is a tool that can be used to overcome the limitations of discounted cash flow analysis, or net present value. Real options provide the right, but not the obligation, to make a future investment. Because research projects develop through different phases or stages, a manager has the option of whether or not to continue investing money based on the success of the research project. Maintaining the option gives the manager the possibility of abandoning ship if the project is not reaching its goals. In this way, a manager can mitigate the risk of supporting a project wholesale from start to finish. Essentially, by using options, a manager limits decision making to information that is actually known. In this way, a manager can avoid spending money on infeasible projects. So in my understanding, is real options analysis like marriage? Marriage is costly to reverse and this significant investment time and the future of happiness or misery is uncertain. So I guess one must enter it with a lot of caution. Courtship is the equivalent of exploratory or R&D investment. Even if the expected return is not high, at least it gives you the opportunity to see if it works out or see how the relationship is going. So am I right by, com by with this comparison? Do you think I'm right? Well, that example is okay, but mine's better. People use real options all the time. Just ask this pharmaceutical salesman. Ooh. Yeah, like Old City tonight? Yeah, six, seven o'clock. Yeah, that, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, uh, Kristen, hold on one second. Dude, what are you doing? What are you, dude, what are you, look, seriously, get out of my face, I'm on, get the f Anyways, Harsha, let's give him an example of real world, real options analysis. What do you say? I don't want to do this. I don't even like you. Great, come on over here, I'll show you. Let's say you've got a new product, and you want to invest $12 million in research and development. And when you do that, you've got a 30% chance of an excellent outcome, a 60% chance of a good outcome, and a 10% chance of a poor outcome. Now, regardless of whatever the outcome is, it's going to cost you $30 million to put um, an investment in product development. So should you decide to invest that $30 million, there, if you've got an excellent product, there's an 80% chance that you'll make $120 million in revenue. If you invest the $30 million in a good product, there's 70% chance that you'll get $20 million. If you invest the $30 million in a poor product, there is a 90% chance that you will lose $120 million in revenue. Now let's do the real analysis options. Real options analysis, rather. So let's say you've decided that you're going to invest $12 million. Here you've got a choice. If the outcome is excellent, then you can invest more because that's what the option says. You've got the option to invest more money. If the outcome is in fact good, you can decide 
I'm not going to invest more money because I want only excellent options and you can decide that you're not going to fund the project any further and you've only lost twelve million dollars. Now let's say you decide to invest in the excellent project and you've invested thirty million dollars. You've, you've decided to do that and now what you've done is you've made the choice to get an eighty percent chance of hundred and twenty million dollars or a twenty percent chance of thirty million dollars. By eliminating the rest of these possibilities you eliminate the possibility of losing hundred and twenty million dollars of losing thirty million dollars of making only twenty million dollars and of making a only thirty percent chance of forty million dollars so you mitigate your risk to these two possible outcomes by using real options analysis which is significantly more sure than all eight of these options do you understand what i'm saying Harshal? yeah i do Good. Now we erase that board. What? Get to it. Ah. Now let's do the mathematics of this fascinating problem. Let's calculate the net present value for the most probable outcome in this research and development project. We initially invest twelve million dollars and then an additional thirty million dollars. To that we add the net present value of the revenue for a total net present value of negative 22.84 million. Now, if we do the net present value and weigh in the probabilities, we again take the initial 12 million dollar investment, the second 30 million dollar investment, and we calculate through this gnarly mess the different probability weights of each individual outcome, and we get a negative 10.8 million. Neither one of these options is desirable in terms of net present value. Now, if we do a real options analysis, again, we start with the $12 million investment, we calculate the net present value of the year two investment, but then we calculate only the desirable outcome that we can choose based on our real option. And when we do that, we get a positive net present value of 4 million point three six. So this is all to say, that when you're calculating net present value just for the most likely outcome and with the probabilities of the different um, possibilities we get a negative net present value so we wouldn't want to invest however when we take into account with real options that we can choose our most desirable outcome we can then come up with a positive net present value and we'll go ahead and invest in the project and we're done as you can see these strategic tools can be very helpful for managers in making decisions about how to invest in research and development projects. But don't take my word for it. Net present value and real options analysis are great ways for your company to gain a competitive advantage. Well, we want to thank you for watching and purchasing this very expensive video. I hope you had as much fun as Harshal and I did. Good luck in your future endeavors.